Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. SPM, sleep promoting medicine, will make us feel truly sleepy. And how do we overcome the sleepiness of SPM? There are totally 3,000 points, high yield facts, covering the entire park, from which 20 questions come in the tomorrow's uh, NEET PG exam. The first part of our journey is to know what are those 3,000 high yield facts that you have to be damn sure about. Some of them are numericals, unless you revise 30 days before exam, you can't recall. There are some points that require a deeper understanding of the concept. And there are some points, at least once you should know about that. So out of these 3000 points in preventive medicine, 500 points require last moment revision. Around 1500 points require at least knowing once. And around 1000 points require at least one extra revision. That's all. So with that focused can you please check whether the voice is loud and clear? With that focused approach towards preventive medicine, let us conquer it. So we had been discussing past few days and uh, we finished almost the first 845 points. So all that notes is given to you. So what you need to do is, you don't need to write any other notes while attending Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. Which point you know already? Which point you feel last 30 days you need to revise? Which point at least once more I need to revise? That is what you use some way to tick mark. And last moment you just check through the points that you are supposed to revise in the last 30 days. And those points should not be more than 500. So that is what I like to once more emphasize. Like this, if we approach all the 19 subjects, 60,000 points, we take around 100 points one hour. 60,000 points, 600 hours we sit together and do the revision. Every Sunday, there is a grand test, morning 9 to 12. Whatever be your level of preparation, please attend the grand test. And then 12 to 3, there is a discussion on the question paper. So 52 grand tests if you take every Sunday, 52 Sundays. Monday to Saturday, evening two hours, we do discuss 200 points. You are sure to get the seat into the top thousand ranks. So there is nobody who is going to stop you. So let's make the great beginning. Achin Khan, Rajiv Kumar, and many more who are all online. Now, Rubila. So what do you, what do we know? What do we need to remember about Rubella? There is a measles, there is a German measles. Measles is different from German measles, remember. Rubella is otherwise called German measles, is what you need to remember. So it is an RNA virus belonging to Togo virus family. What is the incubation period? 14 to 21 days. Lot of times, if you don't remember incubation period, bet on 14 to 21 days. Answer will be correct. A simple way to uh, remember. So who is the source of infection of rubella? It is the cases and subclinical cases. Subclinical cases which are not symptomatic are the source of infection. There is no known carrier state. Favorite MCQ of examiner. Rubella has no carrier state. There are no carriers. Please remember. There are no known carrier state for postnatally acquired rubella. That is, rubella comes from mother to the child postnatally. So for that, there is no known carrier state is what you need to remember. Then eight droplets is the transmission route. It is not by touching. It is not sexually transmitted. Eight droplets. And the period of communicability, very important. 
one week before the onset of symptoms and one week after the rash appears. So this is very important. Suppose if there is a pregnant woman, never immunized against rubella, got exposed to somebody who has symptoms for the past 10 days, right? Past 10 days means one week prior to the onset of symptoms, it is um, what you call uh, communicable. So to decide communicability, whether this woman got infected or not, you need to know the period of communicability. So one week prior to the onset of symptoms and one week after the rash appears is the period of communicability of the rubella, which is one of the favorite MCQ of the examiner. All right. So these are the six points you need to know whenever we say rubella in preventive medicine. Right, doctor? Now, if I get rubella, will I next time get rubella after I recover? Just like COVID. If I get COVID, once more I'll get COVID. There are doctors who got three, four times COVID. I myself got two times COVID. So, single attack of rubella confers lifelong immunity. Secondary attacks are rare. So, once more, this is a favorite MCQ of the examiner. You need to remember. Then, who is susceptible to rubella? 10 to 30% of the reproductive age group females are susceptible. So why you need to bother about uh, rubella? Rubella is one of the torch group of infections. Torch is toxoplasmiosis, rubella, cytomegalovirus, hepatitis. In fact, it is called torch, syphilis. 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 Uh, toxoplasmiosis, rubella, and cytomegalovirus and herpes. So 10 to 30% in India are susceptible to rubella in spite of our extensive vaccination, etc., etc., is what you need to remember. And whenever the mother is immune to rubella, she received vaccine, let us say, then she will pass the antibodies to the newborn. And that passively transmitted antibodies from the mother, they protect from rubella up to four to six months of age. That's what you need to basically remember. And why is this fact important? See, doctor, there are two things. Active immunity, passive immunity. A lot of people have confusion. What is active, what is passive? One common wrong opinion about active, passive immunity is people think live vaccines means active, killed vaccine means passive. No. Whether live or killed vaccine, both of them are creating immunological memory in your own body. They are stimulating your immune system to produce our own antibodies. Both of them are active immunity. Whereas from the mother, you get antibodies no, temporarily. That is passive, no immunological memory. Similarly, you administer serum, immunoglobulin, rabies immunoglobulin, hepatitis immunoglobulin you administer. That only is giving antibodies, which is a transient immunity, no immunological memory. That is called passive immunity is what you need to remember. So till what age infants are protected? Four to six months is what you need to remember. Now, what is the most widely used uh, test for the diagnosis of rubella? Hemagglutination inhibition test is what you need to remember. Now, rubella vaccine, if you take live attenuated vaccine. So what are the list of live vaccines, killed vaccines? You have to be very sure. One of the favorite questions, what is the strain? RA27 by 3 strain is the one which is used in that live attenuated vaccine is what you need to remember. 0.5 ml subcutaneous route is the route of administration of the MMR vaccine. And rubella vaccine is contraindicated in pregnancy and not given in infants. Favorite question. Remember, rubella, rubella vaccine should be given to all reproductive aged women who are not yet pregnant so that when they become pregnant 
they don't get infected and transmit to the newborn. That's the reason vaccine should be given to whom? Reproductive age group women. But if already they are pregnant, that is a contraindication. Right? Because it's a live attenuated vaccine. You are giving a live vaccine to a pregnant woman means you are uh, indirectly infecting the fetus inside. Right? So, contraindicated in pregnancy. Point number one. Second, infants. Infants are automatically having antibodies that came from the mother. Up to four to six months, they are protected. That's the reason newborn infant is not given rubella vaccine. You will wait for up to nine months for a period of time before you administer the MMR. Right? So that's the point you need to understand. Am I too fast? Right? Yeah. If I'm too slow, SPM is very sleep promoting. You will go into a snoring sleep. Now, if a female, if a female is vaccinated to rubella, what will you tell her? Please wait for the next three months before you attempt pregnancy. Three months you follow contraception. Very important. Because a live attenuated vaccine is contraindicated in pregnancy. So if already received today, next three months, she need to wait before becoming pregnant is what you need to remember. So who are the priority groups to whom you administer the rubella vaccine? Very, very important. Reproductive age group females who are between 15 to 49 who are not pregnant. All the children between 1 to 14 years of age and to all routine universal immunization to all children aged 1. They are the priority groups for rubella vaccination is what you need to remember. Now you need to know Congenital rubella syndrome. How do you know if a pregnant woman delivered a newborn baby that this baby is having rubella? Obviously, you look for antibodies. But mother also transmits the antibodies to the newborn. So maternally transmitted antibodies are all what? IgG. G means Ganga. Ganga behti hai. Kaha se? From the fetus to, from the mother to, Ganga ma will go to fetus. Which immunoglobulin can cross the placenta? IgG. So presence of the IgG is indicative of passive transmission. But if the IgG is persisting for more than six months, once more that is indicative of Active infection. Similarly, presence of any IgM antibody shortly after birth also is indicative of an active infection of congenital rubella syndrome is what you have to remember. Now, it's very important at which part of the gestation did the maternofetal transmission occur of the infection decides the severity of congenital rubella syndrome. So, uh, you need to remember that first trimester, that is the time where all the fetal parts are getting produced, embryo is forming, most disastrous time. So, what will happen if there is an acquisition of uh, the rubella, one minute, in the first trimester, first trimester. So, yeah. In the first trimester, if rubella is acquired, then abortions, stillbirth, then there are skin lesions called blueberry mufflin lesion. The color is blueberry mufflin lesions. If you go to Google, there are n number of images of blueberry mufflin. Once upon a time, uh, it used to be very boring to study. Today, Google, YouTube has everything. You go to YouTube and say, I want to see a blueberry mufflin. You have it. If you want to see a complete end-to-end -end cesarean section, you have it on the Instagram. 
what is not there starting from how to wear a sari to looking at how a normal episiotomy done everything is there on the youtube so that's the reason learning is no more boring right still you need dr murli bharadwaj because we will make you toxic doses of 19 subjects consolidated into crisp 600 60000 points which you need to be prepared like chinese warriors you see all those chinese movies where they huge army will be attacking the across the great wall of china right like that right so congenital rubella syndrome what is a clinical triad is a favorite question sensory neural deafness i abnormalities rubella retinopathy rubella cataract rubella microphthalmia these are all the things and congenital heart disease especially pda is very common with rubella so this is the most disastrous period you should remember triad of congenital rubella syndrome which is the favorite mcq of the examiner now if you look at the infection of rubella in the early part of the second trimester so what is the story about it only deafness will occur you don't get heart defects you don't get abortions you don't get stillbirths you don't get the full triad then after 16 weeks if rubella infection happened no abnormalities and uh, there is uh, no risk of fetal damage if it is after 16 weeks so please remember fourth month right that's what you need to understand this is all the story of rubella you need to know maybe around 8 to 10 points out of them 2 to 3 points you need to revise in the last moment like after 16 weeks that number 16 should come to you right so such memorable things try to tick mark don't waste time in writing once more the notes this is the notes on the notes so on that if you write another notes there is no point see what happened when we were medical students somebody said who will read the whole forensic medicine are in reading so hey the review book of narayan reddy is released everybody is happy we were uh, instead of 400 pages we were reading 100 pages some smart senior thought why that 100 pages and he created 30 pages of review on review of narayan reddy then later somebody said that even reading this 30 pages is not required to pass forensic exam so in 12 pages we will write a review on the review of the review of narayan reddy <laughs> so that is all fine then when the 12 pages booklet is given still our class girls are underlining and uh, writing on that then we said we wrote a disclaimer any review on this review of review of review is prohibited right ha huh. so that's a point mere what the correct order lo betti and pages doctor so very good to see four online students so we thank dr girija and uh, me parent doctor sai krishna reddy right sai krishna reddy for coming to the class you know we teachers will be very happy to see students before right because you are the inspiration for us to study prepare a review of review of review and then come and discuss with you so that your job is more easier right so please do come to the class come uh, in the morning only we'll put one nice coffee machine to get you coffee and also get a refrigerator with some good cool drinks we will pamper you so that you get you enjoy studying instead of studying alone in the room right so tell all your other friends from vishwa bharati also to come so that we will have a big gang around over here hmm? so doctor 
mumps let's talk about mumps mixovirus rna paramyxovirus is a mumps virus 14 to 21 days see all incubation periods are 14 to 21 what come in exam clinical subclinical cases are a source of infection eight droplets so generally we think mumps is mouth so something uh, kissing or anything may cause it, but it is droplet eight droplet even leprosy what is the root of transmission of leprosy it is not skin skin touch it is a eight droplet just like mycobacterium so period of communicability four to six days before to seven days after the onset of the symptoms once you got mumps you will never get mumps lifelong immunity and secondary attack rate what is secondary attack rate if i am a primary case if i go home my younger brother got infected who is vulnerable so the one who got infected with my exposure is called secondary case i am called primary case so if i am having three brothers younger brothers who are at risk only one out of them developed then what is the secondary attack rate that one secondary case divided by the total number of people at risk 3 1 by 3 is 33 percent is the secondary attack rate so i am the primary case primary case is neither included in numerator nor denominator dono mein nahi rehta that is very important thing to remember while calculating secondary attack rate so secondary attack rate is a parameter which is an index of communicability of the disease is what you need to remember now what are the clinical features parotitis but now comes a tricky question about mumps most common complication of mumps most common complication of mumps that is aseptic meningitis aseptic meningitis i think you know what is the difference between csf of bacterial meningitis versus viral meningitis doctor csf glucose will decrease if it is bacterial csf glucose is normal if it is viral predominantly lymphocytic response is a feature of viral whereas pmns become increased in bacterial meningitis so aseptic meningitis is most common complication and uh, adolescence in the adolescence what is the most common complication of mumps orchitis and oophoritis in females oophoritis men orchitis is most common complication in adolescence so to be very careful so tomorrow examiner gave a question on mumps means he will be hitting you on this point only and you should go to the exam with 60000 points ready come on i am ready hit me anywhere i'll counter hit you so that is the kind of confidence you should go to attack the examiner so always remember right doctor so the most common complication at all a scent is orchitis and oophorites now comes influenza we all lived we all died we all loved with corona till yesterday so this is most relevant topic once upon a time boring topic orthomyxo virus is the causative agent once more influenza is also orthomyxo virus once more doctor in microbiology they will test you this which class influenza belongs in pediatrics they test spm they will test in medicine they will test same fact so some topics are common to three four subjects out of 19 subjects like malaria tuberculosis gynecology has tuberculosis genital tuberculosis such topics you have to be doubly doubly triply sure about if you take 200 mcqs in the tomorrow's neat pg very easy to crack neat pg you don't need long brains you don't need lot of hard work main thing you need to know is what to read when your friends are all reading what is not needed you should read what is absolutely needed if you are able to do that you are the winner 
you see uh what is the most common cause why people fail in neat pg they have huge expectation 19 subjects means you should be gold medalist in anatomy gold medalist in uh, medicine pharmacology if you are gold medalist in everything uh, that's only possible with two things you don't have any girlfriends you don't have any boyfriends you don't have anybody who is a mate who is of same sex or even opposite sex right unless you are so frigid you can't master 19 subjects to read what is definitely asked and needed itself is taking 600 hours 60000 points and what is frequently asked and needed is only 30% of textbook part textbook is how many pages for example 1000 pages out of this 1000 only 300 pages you have to study if 30% is what is definitely to be known and needed in the exam right which is uh, 60000 points uh, how many points are not required rubbish waste 180000 beautiful so your friends will be reading 180000 and you should be reading 60000 right so then who has a chance of winning you have 70% chance of winning they have 30% chance of winning that is the secret of being with dr murli bharadwaj so in the past 22 years almost two decades 2 lakh medical students i had a privilege of being their teacher so in the same floor once we used to have 200 300 students in the live class so uh what i found is it is not the most brilliant who win the most focused are the ones who win the neat pg exam pg medical right because time is very finite even if you read all this 180000 chatta useless content impossible to revise if you don't know if you can't revise in the last 30 days you are losing the game right doctor now influenza is orthomic so virus a b c three types type a why you need to remember most common cause of the outbreaks and epidemics is type a only cause of pandemics is type b and currently type c is not there it is uh, it's gone right it should once more restart in china now what are the currently circulated influenza viruses in the world h1n1 is a type a and caused what swine flu it causes swine flu h2n2 it is also type a h5n1 is a type a it caused avian influenza which is bird flu h3n2 h74 n9 and type b once more what do you need to remember for tomorrow's exam that i bolded for you in the uh, booklet given to you you don't need to even carry a color pen also right i i purposefully bolded h5n1 is avian influenza bird flu and h1n1 is swine flu h2n2 also is type a only these three points you remember what are the currently circulating now cyclical trends of influenza type a epidemic occur every 2 to 3 years type b epidemic occur every 4 to 7 years and type a causes pandemics and every 10 to 15 years so this is the typical cyclical trend in influenza now between type a b and c c is not there a and b is there antigenic variation is very common in which influenza changes its clothes frequently antigenic variation is most common in type a is what you need to remember now influenza has about one and a half day to three days of incubation period 
period of infectivity is one to two days before and one to two days after onset of symptoms. That's the reason we have a lot of asymptomatic fellows who are not at sneezing. On exposure, we start sneezing after 18 to 72 hours. That's what you need to remember. Now, let us talk four points about avian influenza. Avian influenza is also called bird flu. Highly pathogenic avian influenza, bird flu. H5N1 type A is responsible. It is pandemic and from where did it come from? Hong Kong. Everyone blamed that China is the source of COVID. If not China, in which other country they eat any animal? Anything that flies, crawls, creeps, they eat. So how from animals to humans, if at all infection comes, that will come only in China. And all our students are going to China to become doctors, to treat patients in India. So somebody was telling that uh, we send students to China, we send teachers also to China. Then why both of them can sit in Hyderabad, Amirpet only and study? No. And only for exams, they can fly to China and then write exam and come. Why to waste money of their parents, right? So, Hong Kong. Now, what is the drug of choice for avian influenza? Oziltamivir. What is the other name? Tamil flu. Kannada flu. Tami flu. Tami flu. Oziltamivir. 75 milligrams BD for five days. And it is contraindicated in infants. So, that's a point you need to remember. Now, pandemic influenza, H1N1, 2009 ka. It's called pandemic influenza. It's also called influenza A, H1N1 is a pandemic, globally present. Now, when did influenza pandemic was declared? 11th June 2009. Right? So, after 10 years, we had a super pandemic. 2020. Right? Huh. So, most timely and sensitive detection of influenza. How do you do? Recently, COVID, how did we do? RT PCR is the best way. From there, nasopharyngeal and throat swabs. And in lower respiratory tract infection, pneumonia is there due to. Then, tracheal and bronchial aspirates will help you. And you know very well that there are three types of pneumonia patterns. What are they? You have lobar pneumonia, you have bronco pneumonia, you have interstitial patchy, 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 patchy. Interstitial pneumonia. Commonly viral pneumonias are all interstitial in their pattern. There is streptococcus, etc. Look for lobar pneumonias, right? So once more in general medicine, I'll make you experts. There are totally 10,000 points in general medicine. Point to point, point to point, let us master. Some points require little logic and reasoning, right? Huh. So next, point of care diagnostic tests. Are they required for influenza? Generally, they are not recommended. Of course, in coronavirus time, we have created kits, swaps, point of care, uh, home kits and all that. But that is not generally recommended for uh, influenza. How long you need to isolate a sneezing guy with influenza? Seven days after the onset of illness to 24 hours after the resolution of the fever and respiratory symptoms, whichever is longer. Is that duration of isolation, COVID or influenza or anybody, is what you need to remember. So what is the antiviral therapy for influenza? If there is a severe, progressive clinical illness of influenza. What is the story about influenza? Agar dawa liye to teen din mein kam hoga sardi. Dawa nahi liye to ek din mein kam hoga. Right? Your medicine will only prolong it. So, Oziltamivir, if not available, Zanamavir is considered treatment. 
severe complicated illness if it is there ozil tamivir or zanamivir and uh, if there is no high risk like for example elderly person comorbidities chronic renal failure dialysis patient immunocompromised they are all high complicated if a young uh, medical student is having common cold no need of giving ozil tamivir or zanamivir is what you need to remember so what is the dosage ozil tamivir 75 mg bd for 5 days zanamivir is two inhalations it is inhalational like uh, your uh, uh, inhaler uh, two inhalations twice daily for 5 days is considered to be the treatment now comes avian influenza what is the strain h7n9 china 2013 from there spread to hong kong 33% is the case fatality older males more than 50 are at risk of dying and it is a live bird markets bird markets respiratory is the transmission and human to human transmission is rare one love bird cannot transmit to another love bird actual birds will transmit human to human transmission is not there for avian influenza and treatment is what neuraminidase inhibitors ozil tamivir and zanamivir is what you need to remember now comes very interesting concept antigenic drift antigenic drift point mutations lead to that antigenic drift and antigenic shift you should know differences between the two point mutations lead to antigenic drift there are small mutations they are gradual insidious that is slow in onset and they lead to sporadic cases what antigenic drift whereas antigenic shift shift occur due to genetic recombination reassortment rearrangement everything sudden in nature and it lead to epidemics and pandemics covid 19 tomorrow need pg what will they ask you covid 19 to omicron to tomicron to lumicron to enicron what is the method antigenic shift not a drift okay so this is what you have to sure shot mcq you will remember me in exam hall tomorrow right ha huh. so what are the various vaccines for influenza you have killed the vaccine two doses 3 to 4 weeks apart and 0.5 ml to whom do you give vaccine killed vaccine age should be more than 3 years currently whatever that uh, covaxin and all are all killed they are not live attenuated subcutaneously you give 70 to 90% efficacy and duration of protection is for only 3 to 6 months rarely influenza killed vaccine can cause gullen barre syndrome what is gullen barre syndrome post infectious demyelinating polyneuritis after infection or after giving vaccine demyelinating polyneuritis nerves become demyelinated because of that what do you get afp afp means acute flaccid paralysis there are two things flaccidity spasticity spasticity is seen with upper motor neuron lesions flaccidity is seen with lower motor neuron lesion what is the lower motor neuron in the spinal cord you are having antherhon cells antherhon cells antherhon cells give rise to nerves nerve will reach neuromuscular junction up to presynaptic junction of the neuromuscular junction presynaptic postsynaptic after postsynaptic you have the muscle muscle and postsynaptic membrane come under come under uh, do not come under lmn only presynaptic Uh, membrane of the neuromuscular junction until there only it comes under under 
uh, lower motor neuron. So the nerve, the anterior cell, the nerve, until the presynaptic membrane, you call it as the lower motor neuron. Whenever lower motor neuron, anterior or nerve or the presynaptic membrane of the NMJ, any of them are affected, what do you get? Flaccidity, which is a sign of sign of lower motor neuron lesion. Poliomyelitis people, how will it be? Flaccid, very thin. Uh, that is called flaccidity. Spacity, typically you go to the guy who had a stroke. So he'll have a lot of tightness if you want to extend the joint. Suddenly he will give it up. That's called clasp knife type of spacity. That happens in corticospinal tract lesion. Corticospinal tract starts in the pyramidal cells of beds in the cerebral cortex until the androphon cell. It, it pyramidal tract goes down, 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 reaches the medulla, decussates to opposite side and reaches the androphon cell. Until reaching androphon cell, this corticospinal tract originating in the cerebral cortex, that is called pyramidal tract. Pyramidal tract lead to spasticity, lower motor neuron lesions lead to flaccidity and Gullenberry syndrome is a Post-infectious demyelinating polyneuritis involving the narrow, which is the part of element. That's the reason you get flaccidity, acute flaccid paralysis. Then influenza killed vaccine will bring both local and systemic immunity. And uh, what is the main problem of killed vaccines? Omicron will not listen to covaxin. Once more, Covaxin, which covers Omicron variant by the time you manufacture, another Pimicron will come. Right? So that is the whole problem. Antigenic variations are a big challenge in uh, the killed vaccine production. So what are the various newer vaccines of influenza? Split virus vaccine. Split virus is a sub vaccine. Highly purified, less side effects, less antigenic, multiple injections need to be given and even pediatric populations can receive split virus vaccine. Then neuraminidase specific vaccine. It is also a subunit vaccine containing the neuraminidase antigen. And it is it, it will permit subclinical infection. That's the reason the immunity is long lasting. Neuraminidase specific vaccine. Then we are using recombinant DNA technology to produce recombinant vaccines. So that what you are doing, the virulent strain is there. It has all that spikes on the coronavirus. Those things you will take, use the antigenic properties of them and produce that protein in the using recombinant technology and then use it in the vaccine. That is recombinant. So split virus vaccine, neuraminidase specific vaccine, recombinant vaccine. Frequently asked MCQ, out of the three, which will provide lifelong immunity, longer immunity. Neuraminidase specific vaccine creates a subclinical infection. You get fever and all that, but subclinical. And le lead to long last immunity is what you need to emphatically remember. Now, what is the contraindication to this killed influenza vaccine? Favorite MCQ. If you have an allergy to the Chicken egg, not to your chick, to the chicken egg, not to your chick, chick, right? So chicken egg. History of hypersensitivity or anaphylactic reaction previously. Any Gulenberry syndrome patient within six weeks of vaccine. Contraindication. Infants less than six months. Moderate to severe illness with fever. If the patient is there, don't give vaccine. So please remember these five contraindications to inactivated influenza vaccine is what you need to remember. Now comes the swine flu. Let's talk about the swine flu. You still have energy? Is it getting in? Right? Or uh, you, are, you like to take a quiz? Generally, we have one hour class, a quiz. Then we continue with the second part. That way, 
the planet, right? Quiz in the aha slides. Huh? Uh, let's finish another 10 minutes and then. Are you prepared today for a longer class or a shorter class? In view of first class, shorter or longer? Shorter? Huh? Very good. So in that case, we will finish uh, another 15-20 minutes to conclude. From tomorrow, we will take a longer class. Come well prepared. 6 to 7, we will have a class. Then we will give you a 20 question quiz. So you take the quiz. Following that, once more, we will have uh, another 40 minutes, 30 minutes with a cup of tea. I'll say, Suresh Garu, please arrange some cup of tea huh? with nice charminar biscuits. So that uh, that's a incentive for coming to class. If you come at 3.30, 3 o'clock or 4, traffic will not be there. You can come very fast. So that air conditioning is there. You can prepare nicely and I'll come to class. Right? Ha. So one year is there. So one year actually is not there. Because we are already in April. Uh, we are in May. Once more, uh, entrance will be there in, say, about uh, Jan or Feb. So even if it is there in Feb, don't, uh, how many months between May and Feb? May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, Feb. 10 months. In this 10 months, at least you require 2 months to prepare, uh, revise. 8 months time is available. 8 into 4, 32 weeks time is there. 32 into 6 days. Is about uh, 190 days is all that we have. And we have 600 hours to do revision. Right? So that's the reason we require, uh, uh, I mean, time flies very fast. Of course, slowly, what you do know, at least uh, you plan that every day from now, afternoon, uh, two o'clock, you start. Two to six, you study. And six to eight, you attend the class and go home. So at least the six hours every day, you are able to study. Thoroughly. Huh? Every day. Still you will get the seat. You don't need more than that also. But the problem comes is, we will start Aram Vincharu Nicha Manavul. Aram Vinci Paritcha Nicha Daru Antakandu Nicha Lu. Asar Modala Vettu Nume Problem Vata. Ever Ki Nicha Lu Ki. So, Jho Nicha Lu Khai Wo Shuru Aat Ki Nai Karte. Shuru karke beech mein band karne wale ati niche hote hai. So be very sure that uh, uh, we started great and we will persist longer and greater. And there are, don't worry, I don't teach all subjects to bore you. But there are some wonderful teachers, ENT, we have Dr. Chandra Shekhar. And um, in uh, um, surgery, we have Vishal Soni. Some of the very good teachers are there. So they will teach. But I will definitely anchor on the major subjects until uh, I add that required energy uh, to get pumped into you. So, doctor, single IM injection is the inactivated vaccine of swine flu. What strain uh, you use uh, in vaccine? California strain. H1N1, like strain. And how much temperature you store swine flu vaccine? Plus 2 to plus 8. Protective immunity after 14 days. You also have a H1N1 live attenuated vaccine also. It is used as a nasal spray. Currently, they are trying to use, uh, create a COVID uh, nasal spray vaccine. Then nasal spray can cause rhinorrhea, nasal congestion, cough, sore throat, etc., etc. So that is all the story. So who should receive influenza vaccine? Pregnant women. Killed vaccines can be safely given to pregnant women. Age more than six months with chronic medical condition. 15 to 49 years as a routine immunization. Healthy young children. 
healthy adults 49 to 65 and more than 65 it means everybody actually right so pregnant women also we can give age more than 6 months and not below 6 months that's a point you need to remember now comes diphtheria interesting there are 10 points about diphtheria that i want you to remember is diphtheria endemic yes in india it is endemic low levels without spikes it is existent in community it is a case or a carrier of diphtheria both a case who has diphtheria or a carrier in fact carriers are more important source of infection in diphtheria is what you need to remember and uh, nasal carriers are more dangerous than those who are carrying in the throat and uh, 0.5 to 1% is the incidence of carriers in the community every one in 100 is carrying diphtheria and uh, just because you are immunized does not prevent you from becoming carrier so examiner will ask each of these points do you know do you don't know you know american uh, president there is a debate in india they don't do such debates before election the two candidates who are standing democrats and republicans they both stand first do you want to avoid abortions uh, uh, ban abortions in this country this guy will talk that guy will talk like that examiner also will ask you do you think immunization prevents carrier state of diphtheria you have to take a stand like an american president it does not prevent carrier state so there are very affirmative statements that you need to be very sure for the tomorrow's exam okay doctor now incubation period of diphtheria 2 to 6 days it is not 10 to 14 our classical 10 to 14 no not for diphtheria droplet infection mainly even cutaneous lesions and fomites can cause and 14 to 28 days from the onset of the disease is the incubation period is what you need to remember when do you consider a case of diphtheria or carrier of diphtheria is no more communicable at least two cultures from the nose and throat 24 hours apart should be negative before you consider any diphtheritic individual to be non communicable tomorrow when you become cardiologist this all use useless stuff but to become cardiologist you need to pass through all this wrath called sleeping sleep promoting medicine now shit test for diphtheria it is a outdated test never done but always we need to prepare for it for tomorrow's need pg still four or five points are there inevitable wrath that we need to finish what type of test is shik test it is not subcutaneous it is not intramuscular it is intradermal test what is the purpose of it you can know the immunity status whether the guy is immune against or is he vulnerable not immune second is he hypersensitive or not to the diphtheria toxin so obviously what are the three things that will be there immune guy non immune guy hypersensitive guy there are the three types of guys associated with diphtheria shit test now how do you interpret this is the most boring thing there is one control hand there is one test hand right test arm no reaction control arm no reaction after you have done the intradermal injection he is negative that means he is immune to diphtheria when do you call positive test arm red flush control arm no reaction that is the reason it is called control suppose if he is hypersensitive then even control arm will show so control arm no reaction test arm red flush red flush is going to be positive so that is positive and he is susceptible to diphtheria pseudo positive that means hypersensitive when test arm is red flush fading by fourth day control arm where you have not even given the shik test shik antigen it is also showing red flush anything you do intradermal that guy is 
hypersensitive. Red flesh fading by fourth day. What is combined? If the control arm is pseudo positive with hypersensitivity and test arm is red flush, then that is called both susceptible and hypersensitive. But most likely this question, this point won't come in the modern exam. But every time Park continues to publish the Schick test, every time we are afraid, if we don't read that, we may lose the point. That's called FOMO, fear of missing out. Then Schick test negative. When will Schick test will be negative? If more than 0.03 units of antitoxin against the diphtheria, once diphtheria infection occurs, diphtheria toxin, our body produces antitoxin. If it is more than 0.03 units of antitoxin, then the Schick test will be negative, is what you need to remember, doctor. And modern time, Schick test is replaced by hemagglutination test, is what you need to remember. And hemagglutination is a laboratory method of discovering the antitoxin levels, is what you need to understand. Now comes the purchases. Who think of? Who think of? So, doctor, another last seven minutes before uh, this miserable, miserable uh, revision ends, right? Huh. Purchases, oofing cough. Bartitella purchases, even para purchases also lead to oofing cough. Oofing cough ko kete hai, sau dinon ka khasi, 100 day cough. Sau dinon ka khasi, 100 day cough is the name given for oofing cough. Incubation period is 7 to 14 days. And it is a case of oofing cough which become the source of infection. And most important MCQ doctor, sure shot anewala question, fada fad bolo, there is no subclinical state, there is no chronic carrier state, there is no subclinical state, no chronic carrier state in purchases and woofing cough is what you need to remember. And uh, neither the vaccination nor the infection just because you got infected or vaccinated, just like COVID-19, long-term immunity does not come. And what is secondary attack rate of whooping cough? More than 90%. Females more than males who cough and die. Females more than males. And leukocytosis, the degree of leukocytosis does not correlate with the severity of cough. There may be very severe cough. Botetella purchases is a bacteria. So bacterial infection leads to leukocytosis. But Botetella purchases is known to lead to leukopenia. It induces leukopenia, decreased count. That's the reason cough may be severe, but the count may be normal or decreased. So that is the reason leukocytosis does not correlate with the severity of the cough is what you need to remember. So what are the main complications of whooping cough? It can lead to bronchitis, bronchopneumonia, bronchiectasis, subconjunctival hemorrhage because of the propulsive coughing, epistaxis, hemoptysis, punctate cerebral hemorrhages, convulsions, and coma. Anything can happen with whooping cough is what you need to remember. So how do you diagnose Bordetella purchases? Bordet Gengov's medium is the medium on which you culture the nasopharyngeal swabs. Polymerase chain reaction. There is also direct fluorescence, immunofluorescence test. And serological methods are available to detect the antibodies against the Bordetella. And what is the drug of choice of whooping cough, doctor? Erythromycin, 40 milligram per kg, QID, 10 days. This is a favorite MCQ. A lot of times we miss it. It is not tetracycline, it is not penicillin, it is erythromycin. Very few indications of erythromycin. Right? That is the story of purchases. Lastly, before we conclude, let us know 10 points about meningococcal meningitis. So it is a gram-negative diplococci. Once more, there is another uh, dirty subject I always hated. Microbiology. 
always remember a good teacher is a bad student he hated to learn he hated to read and he found a shortcut and minimal points to teach that's the reason the best teachers are not uh, pgi toppers of course i am an exception i am a topper in my time i got a first rank at the same time my students i made when i prepared when i first started coaching way back in uh, um 1999 i myself is a state topper and uh, first 100 92 students got in the 92 ranks in the first 100 my students got who attended coaching those time only usmania gandhi deccan three colleges in hyderabad so all the students came and uh, uh, first 100 they got they made 92 ranks i myself was a topper but generally i became a topper only after i started coaching because gynops my god it's not my cup of tea but for my students who sit in the early morning early morning we used to conduct a class at 5 o'clock in the school in a small school i should never take fee also from the students because i was preparing they are preparing fun but i used to have about 120 150 students in the class i used to come and draw all the uh, diagrams on the school board with the chalk piece by the time students come i used to deliver the class at early morning 5 o'clock great days right so that's the reason always remember you should have two to three friends with whom you should be able to sit and crack the points that you are forgetting if you are forgetting they are forgetting then how you can collectively make it to get remembered that is the challenge all right doctor so that's the reason uh, without company you are preparing means you are not preparing at all and the purpose of coming to this class in nampali is to meet other friends who are also preparing form a group enjoy reading and this is the most memorable part of life tomorrow when you become consultant life is boring right and uh, doing post graduation post graduation hota hai gadha right gadhe ki kaam karna padta hai idhar udhar bhagte hue gadha blood bank se ward ko ward se discharge ko discharge se casualty ko bhagna padta when you will enjoy this time when you are cracking bloody what is the incubation period of pertussis what a nonsense about entrance exam right huh? so you need to know bought that gengal medium you have to remember reproduce in the tomorrow's exam right nothing to do with your intelligence so doctor a b c d 29 e w 135 x y they are all the zero types careers are more important as swords than the cases so this is another favorite question in which infection careers are more important than even cases meningococcal meningitis because meningococcal meningitis case looks very florid in the hospital but careers you don't recognize they may be there in the lift and if you are vulnerable you may get the meningococcal meningitis and the uh, time for which the carrier carries is almost 10 months and uh, whenever there is an epidemic the number of carriers in the community can go up to even 70 80% and with a droplet infection incubation period is for 2 to 10 days and case fatality is almost 80% very high case fatality rate and early diagnosis you can bring down the case fatality to less than 10% of meningococcal meningitis now comes favorite mcq of examiner sure short question this is practically also important treatment of the cases of meningococcal meningitis from the days of alexander fleming when he discovered penicillin till today penicillin is the drug of choice to treat the cases to treat the carriers you give rifampicin for chemo prophylaxis of contacts of a meningococcal case give rifampicin is considered to be drug of choice don't forget now how much rifampicin for chemo prophylaxis 600 mg bd for 2 days you get the tb medicine narsin rifampicin 600 mg right so 
beading for two days is considered to be the treatment and just because you gave penicillin to a case it does not prevent him from becoming a carrier the certain carriers are more important than cases when it comes to the meningococcal meningitis is what you need to know meningococcal vaccine it's a killed vaccine cellular fraction 0.5 ml dose subcutaneous where do you give anterolateral thigh middle one third you have to give booster every 3 years and it is available for a c w135 and y and it is not available for group b why because group b is a polysaccharide it is a carbohydrate but the others are all proteins so you can produce a vaccine against them antibody against them i mean you can make it antigenic but group b is a polysaccharide it is non immunogenic and hence group b meningococcus there is no vaccine there is another mcq doctor please don't forget right and this kind of fine fine points tomorrow meningococcal meningitis you see in the screen is he asking about the vaccine group b is not there is he asking about where is the location of the vaccine is he asking about is it subcutaneous everything must come like you and you should attack the examiner like a scud missile is what you need to know so what are the contraindications for the vaccine pregnancy infants and children less than 2 years they don't develop antibodies even if you give vaccine that's the reason contraindication to give it at less than 2 years of age pregnancy are the contraindication for the meningococcal vaccine is what you need to remember so doctor with that let us conclude the today's wonderful evening thanks to all the online students for uh attending the live class once more tomorrow we will meet at 6 o'clock thank you